So hello everyone. Today we are going to look at how to set up and configure a Modbus TCP master, call it client, uh, in CodeSys uh, on a Windows soft PLC, CodeSys Windows soft PLC. So we demonstrated in a previous uh, video how to install a Windows soft PLC, a CodeSys Windows soft PLC on your computer. Uh, thereby turning your computer, your PC, your Windows PC into a PLC and we explored how this is very important when you are developing your CodeSys applications and you don't have the production controller at hand at that moment. And we saw that you can use this soft PLC to develop your develop and test your applications. And then later when you have the production controller, then you can just switch or update the device description and um, then run your application on, on your target PLC. So again, we uh, pointed out or emphasized the difference between a soft PLC and simulation. Uh, whereas with a simulation, you can only simulate software-based uh, processes. Uh, with a soft PLC, uh, this is using your real PC hardware. So you're not only simulating, you're using the real hardware on, of your P PC. So that means that you can use uh, field bus interfaces. And one of those interfaces is Modbus, like we, we talked already. And we saw in a previous uh, demonstration how to set up and configure a Modbus TCP server. And today's tutorial basically is kind of a continuation of that. And now we are looking at how to configure and set up a Modbus TCP master on a soft PLC. So as you can see here already, I can show you my device that I'm working with here. Uh, you can see that I have a couple of uh, devices installed on this uh, computer, but I'm using this uh, CodeSys uh, Control Win V3. It's one of the soft PLCs that are shaped by, by CodeSys. I have multiple of those. I have this uh, RTE V3. I have this also RTE V3 64-bit. And then the v Win V3 comes in two versions. There is the Win V3 and then there's the Win V3 64 bit. So you can choose whichever you want to, to use. I'm using uh, the 32 bit here. And I also demonstrated in, in a previous video how to install this uh, soft PLC. So I assume that uh, all that is clear up to this point. So now we are going to attempt to set up uh, our Modbus TCP uh, master, call it client here on this uh, soft PLC. And then we shall read data, write data to a Modbus TCP uh, server, as we shall see uh, going forward. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the setup that I have for the Modbus server, where we're going to we are going to read data and write data. So I have a virtual joystick application here in Automation Builder. So the application is running on an uh, ABB SC500 controller. So you can see right here. So right here I have an AC500. Uh, it's uh, using the PM5650 uh, processor there. And I have implemented a simple application here in, in Automation Builder. I said virtual joystick uh, application. So basically what, I, what it does is I move the joystick here. And then depending on the direction that I move it in and how much I move it in that particular direction, then I would get the X and Y coordinates of the pos position of the joystick and also the angle and then the radius. So it's quite a simple, just a simple application. I've um, mapped all those parameters to four variables here. So you can have the X and Y components of the position of the joystick, have the radius, and then I have also have the angle there. So those are the four components that I'm, I'm generating uh, when I, whenever I move the joystick. So I'm running a Modbus TCP server here. Once I've already mapped a variable to a register space in my uh, Modbus uh, server register space already. So I've mapped it to, this is an array of four registers of type word. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, write these variables, the values of these variables to these uh, registers so that I can access them over, over Modbus. So I'll get, um, the first register there, 
and I'm going to map that to the X components of the position of the joystick. So instead of type integers, I'll just map it directly, I think. I don't have to do any conversions. Um, and then I'll do the same for the Y. That is uh, register index 1. We'll take the Y. And then register index 2. We'll take the radius. And then register index 3 will take our angle. Okay, so that is all I need to do on my uh, server side. So whenever I move the joystick, like I said, those uh, values will be generated and then they'll be written to these Modbus server registers and then I can access those values via Modbus TCP uh, connection there. So. I will uh, upload this code to my uh, SC500 controller. So I'll come here under communication, scan my network there, I found my controller, and then connect here and then upload the code to that uh, PLC. And then our Modbus uh, TCP server is done setting up. Now we can turn our attention to the Modbus TCP master or call it Modbus TCP client. Okay, we are waiting for uh, this code to upload on our controller here. We're going to make a short test as well to make sure that uh, everything is working as expected and then we can proceed. Okay, code has uploaded now. I can start the application there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how this works just briefly. So um, we can observe here, whenever I turn the joystick here or whenever I move the joystick, we should get the corresponding values as we already said. So if I move the joystick in this direction, so you can see that I'm I'm getting those values as I move the joystick. And these are written directly to the server uh, registers there, and then we can access those values over, over Modbus. So this is working correctly. Let's go ahead and set up our uh, Modbus client or master. So to set up a Modbus client, we shall attach a Modbus TCP master instance on this Ethernet interface. So right click on that. Go to add device and then scroll under Modbus. You want under Modbus master, you get the Modbus TCP client uh, device there. You add that to your Ethernet interface there. You can close that. You can do a little bit of configuration here, but there isn't much anyways to do. All this will remain as, as is, you won't change anything. But what we want to do is now to attach a Modbus uh, TCP server on this, uh, on this client. So that will represent our remote, remote server, as you'll see. So right click again on this object that we just added, uh, go to add device, and then still under Modbus, scroll under Modbus or expand under Modbus TCP server, and then select one Modbus TCP server device, and then add that to the client device. Now here, if you have multiple servers that you want to connect to, you can just add them on the same node. So I can add a second one if I wanted. So I can have them, all of them, I can add as many as, as, I, as, I, as I have. I think there is a kind of a, a, um, a limit, I think it's around 127 or 126 devices, but uh, you can add multiple of those, so you can see what I've done here. Okay, I'll delete the second one because we are just working with one at the moment. And then the next part here is now to configure the properties of that uh, that server. So you double click on that. The first thing you want is the uh, IP address of the server. So I already know the IP address of my uh, controller. It's 192.168.1 and then it's 200. And then you will need the port as well. So I've not shown you the configuration that I have on this uh, server, but I can kind of show you just briefly. So you can see that I have the port as 502, and that, that is basically the two main important uh, properties is the uh, IP address, that is the IP address of the controller, and then uh, the port, what about CCP port, that is 502. So that, those should correspond here. So the, the IP address of the controller there, and then the port there. Response time, I'll leave it to 1000. And now uh, I've done configuring those uh, uh, connection properties. Now I can go ahead and start uh, defining how I want to read, read my data. So in CodeSys here, there are two ways you can define how to read data from a Modbus TCP server. The first one is using function blocks. So whenever you add a server, rather a client uh, device here on the, on the node here, a library is added automatically here. This, uh, rather this uh, IO driver Modbus TCP library, it contains function blocks and functions that you can use to read and write data to the server. 
but there is a that's so that's that is one of the the the, the ways that you can uh, implement your logic on how to read and write data the other way you can use or the other method you can use is to use um, channels and that is the one we are going to explore first and then later in a later video we shall see how we can also work with our function blocks function blocks give you more control but channels are also like really uh, they are really quick and fast and um, each of the ways each of the two methods has its own advantages and disadvantages it depends also on on, on your preference what you want to do and what you want to use but uh, let's look, first look at the channels option and then later we shall look at uh, the function and function blocks option as well so i'll close this and then i'll go back here so this is my uh, one percent server uh, object here representing my remote server so we've configured the communication parameters here and then there is an option here called modbus server channel so here you can define channels channels uh, each channel defines a modbus uh, action so remember we have different methods modbus uh, methods that we can uh, work with when reading and writing data we can decide to read coils read uh, coding registers read input registers write co write coils uh, so you know the the, the basic or standard uh, modbus uh, protocol or Modbus protocol uh, methods, as, as uh, if I can put it that way, or call it Modbus protocol functions. So each of the channels here will represent uh, a particular function, like we can see, like we are going to see. And um, to add a channel, basically you have a menu down here. There is this add channel uh, button here. So you click on that, and then uh, you will define what uh, the functionality of the channel. Basically, you give it a name. I'll leave it at channel zero. And this is where now you define the Modbus uh, function that you want to, to perform. So like we said, you can read coils, you can read discrete inputs, you can read holding registers and things of the kind. So each channel represents just one, one function. So in this uh, tutorial, we are reading holding registers because that is how our server is set up. So read holding registers, and then you define here the uh, trigger. How, when do you want to read? So it can be cyclic, meaning it's uh, repetitive uh, over a certain duration. So you read continuously, uh, of a certain duration you can uh, use um, an event so you can use this rising edge uh, option so whenever an event occurs then you, you read, read, it, read data or you can use uh, the application uh, here uh, options but in this tutorial we're going to we're going to look at this cyclic uh, method so the cyclic method uh, a cyclic, cyclic trigger uh, uh, also needs to this uh, cycle time uh, parameter here so you configure how, how fast you want to read so i want to read every one second you can add a comment if you want to and then here you define the uh, register uh, the, so which register uh, number you're reading and then how many registers you're reading so here uh, with regards to our uh, server configuration here we have to read starting from zero so you can see there that is the um, first register of the, our server register space so we should start reading from zero and then we want to read uh, four registers so I'll say read from zero and then read four registers. And basically that's it. You've defined your channel. It defines one Modbus method or function, and then you're good to go. If you want, you can define uh, as many channels as you want. So you just add channels and, and things of the kind. Okay, so we've defined our channel. Uh, we are reading cyclically and we are reading every one second. Uh, the next thing you want to do is uh, to map uh, your, uh, data that you're reading from, from the Modbus server to uh, local variables. So as you can see, we defined four variables, rather for registers. So we have all those four IO, IO mappings that we can do here. And um, to do that, we shall come here and we shall define an array. So we shall define a corresponding array on this other side. So here we have, we call this MB joystick data, it's an array of four, four word. So we have to define a corresponding array on this uh, side of the, on the master side as well. So we shall call this MB joystick or server joystick. So MB server joystick, take data, and this is an array from zero to three of what? like that i've defined a local buffer here that will uh, that i can map to um to my uh server io here so i'll go ahead and map that 
so I can map individual uh, word variables, so I can map the whole array here. So the array should have the same size as, uh, sorry, here. The same size as, as on the server server side. So four uh, array, or rather four, four word, array of four words on the server side, array of four words here on the client side, and, and basically we're done with that. Now the next part, now we've done, we've already finished our configuration. So we've added the server, the master here, added the server on that, defined the um, communication properties here, We've defined our channel here, and then we've done the mapping, uh, IO mapping as well, to the local uh, buffer here, where we can uh, comfortably access our data that we read from there. From the server there, uh, the other thing you want to do is, uh, so soft uh, PLC runs on your computer. Your computer might have multiple uh, Ethernet interfaces. So you have to define which interface you want to, to use for this communication. So I want to select the interface that I connect the server through. And as you can see here, I double click on Ethernet and then I come here, Ethernet interface, I browse. So as you can see, I have multiple interfaces on this uh, laptop. But the one that I that has, uh, that is connected on the same net network as my server is the one that I'm interested in here. So I'll scroll down and look for that. So it should be my Wi-Fi interface here. So you can see it's 192.168.1 and 34. Select that, okay. And basically you, you, you're done here, you're good to go. I'll save this. And then uh, I'm ready to upload this code on my computer, or rather on my on my soft uh, PLC, sorry. So one thing that I have to make sure is that uh, my soft PLC is running. And I'll come here to my uh, tray. I have my, uh, so this, uh, this is where I can see the, the status of, of my uh, soft PLC. So you can see code sys, uh, control win sys tray, and it says it's running. If it's in stop state, so it will be like this. It will tell you that it's not running. And then you can just click on it and then you, you start it. Just like that. Now uh, my uh, soft PLC is running. My, my uh, runtime, of this runtime is running. And then now uh, I double click on device. I scan my network. I should uh, identify it so you can see it's right there. Select it and then click OK. And I've now established connection to it and now I can upload my, my program. So I'll go ahead and uh, upload my program. Click login and then upload program, and then we wait for a while. Program has uploaded, and then I click run there. Now, it's a good sign if you see these uh, green green uh, symbols here. That means that everything is okay. If I had an error, for example, if I misconfigured the connection to my server and, or if there is a problem with the connection, then there would be like a red uh, alert here, or orange alert or something like that. But uh, this uh, means that um, everything is running correctly. Okay, now that we've set up everything, now we can start uh, um, generating some data on the server side and we should be seeing that data come here in real time. So I'll start uh, moving the joystick and we should start seeing data coming in right away. So as I move the joystick, so you can see now uh, we are getting data. We're reading that data directly from the mod bus and we are getting it here in our local uh, data buffer as we've uh, seen already. So as I move the joystick, we get the X component, the Y component, the uh, radius and the angle there. If you see a number that is the six, five, four, nine, zero, that is a negative number. So that is a representation of uh, that number on a 16 bit register. So, but um, anything that is uh, above six, five, five, three, five is a negative number. And then the positive, uh, of course, anything that is below that. But now you can see that we're getting uh, data there directly. We're reading this data from, from our server. As I move the joystick here, now it's at zero, move it again. We read our data directly from, from our bus there. We can also observe the data here on our IO uh, channels. So as I move again, you can see it there on the IO channels directly. So everything is working correctly and that is, we are having only one channel here. So you can add as many channels as you want. And you, can, you should define one modbus function for each of the channels. So this is the channels method. And later, we shall see how we can also use function blocks to read write data to the server there. But uh, so that's it for uh, this uh, short video here. Um, I think we're still getting data. I guess so. Yeah, there we're still getting data. So basically, that's how, how you can set up your uh, modbus CCP uh, master on a Windows soft PLC, running on a Windows computer there. All right, thank you and have a nice day.